Great! Another wrestler that doesn't ring any bells for me. I'm pretty sure that will continue to be an issue in every wrestling game, uh, really. It's not like I had an encyclopedia worth of knowledge about everyone in the business before I stopped actually watching it. Well, this guy started off giving us more of a fight than the giant, at the very least. Too bad for him, I'm pretty damn relentless when given the chance. It's not like we have to worry about running out of breath in this game. That was not what I was trying to do. But at least things are in our favor enough that those kinds of uh, issues won't put us in a bad position or something. Anyway, apparently Riggs retired in 2009 and never worked in the WWF at all. He left WCW in 1999, moved to ECW, the other company that the WWF outright bought, and then went to a bunch of smaller venues from there with a significant pause between some smaller companies due to uh, personal troubles. Again, not someone who stood out from the crowd at the time, I'm sorry to say. I'd stop letting myself get hit by strikes as someone is getting to their feet. It certainly happened often enough that I should have noticed a pattern. Hell, the matches in this game so far are following a pattern that's pretty close to many of the matches we had in the previous WCW game. I wish there was an option to hold the submission despite being told to break it. Uh, sure, a bit of a heelish uh, move, but I don't really give a damn if I come across as a bad guy or not to this crowd. I'm just here to tear through a random selection from the roster in order to get the championship and then move on. Feels, uh, like we should have been hurt by his chop there. Another guy who managed to kick out of the chat hammer at two and a half. I suppose they're incrementally increasing the difficulty from one match to the next in this game. Well, it certainly didn't take him long to get to the ropes from there. Still, with the beating he's already taken, it'd take a downright miracle for him to turn it around. for a spear to send the guy through the ropes like that. It would have made more sense if we sound bouncing against the turnbuckle or something. That's another match down. Doesn't seem like any of these poor bastards can go five minutes with us. It would feel downright awesome if we could hear uh, Goldberg's old WCW team theme every time we won, but eh, I'll take what I can get. Wait. Why the hell did I get negative points for our special move? 
And come to think of it, how does the whole life bonus thing work when we don't even see precisely how injured we are at a given point? Hell, we don't know how injured the other guy is. Anyway, <sighs> I suppose it's time for us to go up against Hogan. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say this is going to be a therapeutic in any way. I don't hate him that much, even if he has done a number of things over the years that make me dislike both the character and the person behind the character. Eh, sure, he's got a massive ego. He has been consistently selfish and ready to sabotage the careers of those around him just so they don't have a chance to shine brighter than his star. Many of the storylines where he's explicitly the good guy, he's done bad guy tactics and tricks, and we're supposed to cheer for him. If anything, his shift to being the bad guy when the NWO was first born was probably among the most honest moments of his career. And to be honest, he was a damn good villain at the time. Unfortunately, he was a villain who didn't get all that many definitive losses, not even when they would make sense from a storytelling standpoint. Hell, when the writers backed him into a corner where he should get his ass kicked in a definitive way, he would find some way to weasel his way out of it with backroom deals and various other things, either somehow getting the win or rendering the loss completely moot. Good God! I know he wasn't the only person involved in the crappy way the Wolfpack storyline ended, but it most definitely felt like his idea for Kevin Nash to fall down due to being touched with a finger, laying down for the 1, 2, 3, and then the bad guys celebrate the ring for the nothing that should have been a main event. Ugh. Maybe not the worst thing he's ever done, but definitely a crowning moment. Anyway, it seems that he didn't even last two minutes against us. I literally ranted longer than that fight took. I wonder what it says that one of the biggest names in wrestling history gets taken down in less time than some mid-carders we had to smash through just to get here. Ah, Stevie Ray, the older brother of Booker T. They were a damn good tag team called the Harlem Heat where Booker T went on to become a pretty damn solid single star in the WWF, despite some dumb crap along the way. Stevie opened up a school for uh, wrestlers called Booker T and Stevie Ray Pro Wrestling Academy. He retired in 2017. I kind of wish I could point to some stars that he helped train, but I have not been able to find such information in Wikipedia or any of the other sites I've checked. Again, Definitely worth respecting the guy regardless of how many stars he's connected to. He had fun doing the thing he dreamed of doing as a kid, supported his brother as he continued to go on that road, and tried to help as many people as he could for the next generation of wrestlers. us a good number of times. Still, it takes more than countering to win. You need to have some offense of your own. Instead, he's just countering one move in order to eat the next three or four. Not that what he's doing is bad, especially since I remember one of my biggest annoyances in the two WWF games was how insanely counter-happy the AI could get. I personally could never figure out the perfect timing for counters. So I typically just mash the correct button to block a strike or grapple and hope one of the button presses is accurate enough to uh, give it to me. So when the AI does nothing but counter, it can get annoying. It's not helped that in the WCW games, you don't have to worry about the difficulty suddenly jumping from something like easy to hard, entirely skipping over normal, for the sake of giving you a more dramatic uh, difficulty spike. But the WWF games, ay, the difficulty rise is not so gradual or predictable. Huh. Honestly, didn't think that interference was a thing in this game, considering how many matches we've gone through so far. And I'm kind of annoyed they didn't send Booker T. They just picked someone at random to do a run-in. Oh, 
Well, that certainly didn't uh, last long, did it? Uh, so not only was the person running in just completely random, but the way the guy was programmed to just stand in the corner like a manager after taking a set amount of damage means he's even more useless. So now I can't help wondering why we never saw anyone else show up in any of the other matches we've gone through to get this far into the game. I'm also pretty curious how many matches there are between us and facing the champion at this point. Again, I really wish there was a better way to judge just how badly hurt the opponents are in this game. I suppose I'll have to wait until I finally get to PS2 wrestling games before I see anything like that implemented for some reason. Sure, considering how people can keep fighting regardless of how damage they are means a traditional health bar wouldn't be right, but still... So the absolute next match is the championship one, which means this is the last match of this LP. Mr. Perfect is one of those awkward moments where I feel the gimmick is a stupid idea, but the guy they assigned to it did a much better job than anyone else could have. I wouldn't quite say he was a perfect fit, partly because that one has already been used way too much over the years. Hell, with the sheer number of times the word perfect was used in promos surrounding the guy, the word kind of lost some of its meaning. There's also the fact that I don't think people actually called him Mr. Perfect in WCW, just Kurt Henning. So I suppose my annoyance with the gimmick itself is maybe a bit misplaced here. And there's also the fact that comparing how he used the Mr. Perfect gimmick to how The Undertaker used his gimmick and moved it over the decades, well, that's just a blatantly unfair comparison. Credit where it's due, with the champ is putting up the best fight we've seen in the game so far. It's certainly understandable. It already feels like it's going to be a solid match to end this LP on. Though, now I can't help wondering who the actual Kurt Henning considered a worst person to face in the ring. Goldberg or the Ultimate Warrior? Both were hard-hitting, not especially versatile people to work with. And while the Ultimate Warrior ended up getting a DVD release saying just how bad he was, that was an exaggerated character assassination, and I have no clue why the WWE felt the need to do that. At the very least, they changed their opinion of the guy when he accepted being put into the Hall of Fame, and certainly when he died. On the other hand, there's Goldberg, who has one confirmed crippled for life opponent in Bret Hart, and several others injured in less severe, but still pretty bad ways. I liked watching him because he was fast, powerful, and kept things simple. No need to add any spices to why he wants to fight someone. Just a quick, you're next. But there's this odd disconnect in my head where I loved watching Goldberg work, which was prone to actually hurt the people he worked with, and I don't actually want anyone seriously getting hurt. If you told me to get into a ring despite having absolutely no experience, and I had the choice between the Ultimate Warrior and Goldberg, both of them somehow back in their prime, I would most certainly pick the Warrior. Because the Warrior might leave me bruised, but Goldberg? Holy shit, I might not be able to walk properly again for the rest of my life. That does it, I am complete.
completely done with the WCW games. It was a short ride, but it was fun where I'm sitting, and I hope it was fun for other people watching me go through this bit of memory lane. <laughs> Seems even Mr. Perfect couldn't avoid losing some points somewhere. I'm pretty sure this is the only wrestling game I know of that has an end score like an arcade game, right down to you having to enter three letters as an entry in a top score way. Well, look at that! Goldberg is in first and third place. I'm kinda glad that Hogan doesn't show up on this list, but really? Where's Sting or Flair? And once again, we unlock someone just as I'm finished with the game. That seems to happen quite a lot, doesn't it? Thank mm -hmm. you.